All right, guys. It is a cool, rainy day. Hallelujah here in the end times. At Bugs in a Jar Farm, the heat has broken. It is like 70 degrees on Thursday, July 11th, uh, 2024, where we have uh, some great news for all the adoring fans of uh, <laughs> the, the superstar of Humpty Dumpty Drive, who now has 3,412 views from his last video. Uh, go figure. But we want to welcome back. Grant Lee has resurfaced. So Grant, say hi to the folks and what's been going on in your life. Hello everybody. It's good to be back at Bugs in the Jar. It's a beautiful day. It's not it's not a killer heat day. So that's no, it's really not. nice. So probably the only reason I agreed to come and move some rocks with Sam today. But um, it's good to be back. I, I moved into an apartment in Portland, New York. Um, and He's out of the tent. I'm out of the tent, so for all the people saying, get this squatter off of your oh, land. I got him off. I'm gone. but I ran him off. Not entirely, but pretty much. So I was grateful for the time I was able to stay in the tent. It's really the only reason I was able to get up on my feet and find a place to live. And now it's looking like a lot of work soon. So I'm really grateful to Sam and what Bugs in the Jar Farm offered me. And, uh, I'm no longer uh, freeloading off Sam, so. There you go. <laughs> he was never entirely freeloading. I'm just going to give the folks a quick, a quick picture of what this, what we did today at the Blue Dragon Tiny House. Check this out. So, uh, we built a new stone, uh, walkway out to the outhouse. So this is what we have been busy doing. Look at this gorgeous. So anyway, if you need a uh, if you need a trail to your outhouse, here is the young man to call. Oh, Grant Lee. He is a seasoned outhouse trail builder. Seasoned weed raker, outhouse builder. What else, Sam? Irrigation uh, system helper. He is uh, getting more and more skills and talents with each passing day. So, uh, anyway, so you have been hanging around me for a little over a month, and I want to talk about you seem to be more of a doomer than when you got here. Well, it was interesting because you were saying, you know, what's he going to think about the first interview later on down the road? And I don't remember how long you said we should review it. But it's interesting because it's stuff that since meeting Sam, it's stuff I've never thought about in my life um, for whatever reason. Maybe because I'm not supposed to think about it or, or what. But um, yeah, Sam's getting to me. I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. Yeah, but it's for the worse. It's for maybe the worse. for the worse because it's really scary. Just driving around in any town, I mean, you can kind of see what humans are up to and, you know, whether or not I agree that we're all fucked tomorrow, I think we're all fucked. Okay, so we, we, at least we have, we, we, are, we are so fucked. We're we fucked. Just, There's we're... no saving humanity. Alright, you're making quick progress. He's 27 years old. But I think humanity and life are different things, but anyways. I'm glad life is not fucked, but I think humans are fucked. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, what did you think of your trip to the quarry today? I took him to the <laughs> fracking supply quarry down the road. I mean, it's just, it's literally just one example of an endless, endless um, string of ways that humans are not being stewards of the land. Um, yeah, and so it's it's depressing going to places like quarries. Um, the main thing I became really worried about, or just not not fearful, but just the thing that helped me realize that we're all fucked is that I was doing the job for one of Sam, someone Sam introduced me to, and um, I was removing plastic from their garden that had been in the ground for quite a long time. So there's little teeny little pieces of plastic that I was ripping up out of about a half acre. I still need to finish that job. But the but the 
the thoughts, because I don't listen to music while I work, I don't stay on my phone while I work, I, I'm very much present with whatever I'm doing, and all the thoughts in my mind were, you know, I'm removing the plastic from the land, that's a very positive thing, so I was proud to be doing that for the first hour, and then I realized I'm not removing the plastic, I'm putting it somewhere else. And then I looked up from pulling up the plastic all bent over, I looked up and I saw a woodchuck that had a mouthful of plastic and he was chewing on it like he wanted to take a big piece of it and haul it somewhere he it to his babies. or something. And then I realized the woodchucks have microplastics. Humans, I mean, I guess there's that study that they found microplastics in every person's testicles or every male's testicles. And then you think about, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean, it's in the oceans, it's in like, every, and I'm just, I don't know, that might not be a problem. Somebody online is probably going to go, do you realize this, this, and this? And I'm going to be like, well, I didn't. But from just a honest, straightforward, no bullshit way of looking at things, there's plastic in everything. And then when you start to look for plastic and you're, wherever you're sitting right now at home, I'm, uh, or wherever, like, you can probably see, like, at least five to ten, probably a lot more. We're looking at 50... Items. Between 50 and 100 pieces of plastic. And we're in an outdoor cabin in a beautiful, yeah. beautiful place in the mountains and they're surrounded, still by plastic. surrounded by plastic, even though we're out here and I mean, go to any campsite. So plastic was really the kind of thing that I thought I realized we're never removing this. And also we can't stop. We can't stop. The plastic is everywhere. Like even if, even as a person, because I've now become conscious of this plastic, I'm trying not to purchase plastic. You can't. You, you yeah. can't. You can't not purchase plastic. I'm trying to. You know. But then you realize you can reduce, but and you can reuse. But then you're still putting microplastics into your body. And you, you hear what I'm saying? It's just. It seems like the plastic. And I said this verbatim to a friend that plastic is the single um, most detrimental thing to humans ever. And I mean that that has some time to age probably. I. Like, not quite I think ready to join you on that, but uh, I think that's one of the biggest, you know. I see we're poisoning the hummingbirds with microplastics. Well, the I mean, plastic even, hummingbird heater. Yeah. Heater. Well, that's been cooking in the heat. Yeah, that's and it's uh, been sitting there. Instead of flowers, they they have yeah. real flowers, but they also they have a choice between uh, real flowers and plastic. Humans have choices between real food and processed foods. They do. But what do they mostly pick? Uh, <laughs> it just tastes so damn good and it's so convenient. So anyways, I, I don't know. I, I think that I think that humans are fucked and it's not just the plastic, it's the it's the mindlessness and the hate that you see when you go to town. And maybe that's because my lens is different right now. Maybe I'm seeing it a lot more, but I, I think that I was in a Walmart one day and I was like realizing Everybody was a victim, and everybody was pissed off. It was like, it was like every. It's my, it's my fault that you had to come to Walmart, and not, that I'm in your way, and vice versa. So, it's, I don't know. It, it's, it's worrisome. Yeah. Sam's been getting to me. I've been like having these weird visions. It, and the joke about it, I, I've been avoiding the doom and gloom for the past week. Yeah, Sam's I, been off of it, and, and I'm all and, of a sudden. And he's on it. It's kind of a curse, but... It, it is a major curse. It's the biggest curse of your entire life. And get the hell out of here while you still can. Maybe you can't. You've already been... You, you, you've been grabbed. Well, I think it's a good reason still to be very happy. Not that, you know... Not that I'm proud of the choices that I and my ancestors have made, but that I can be very happy with my present because why not? We're all going to be gone. Like. What what is this little thing you were mad about going to matter when there's is no whatever it is you're mad about? <laughs> Answer is it doesn't fucking matter, and you should just be happy and do the best that you can in every moment. Well, unless you're mad about plastic, it's going to be here for at least ten thousand years after we're gone. Yeah, but minimally. Yeah, but after that, after that, there you go. You know what I mean? So uh, anyway, what I wanted to do with Brad is. Uh, this is actually from that other channel. I'm going to read this comment. Grant is 27, and I wanted to share this comment from some doomer I have never heard of from that other channel, Glenn 
Savale. Okay. I, I want Grant to say, how much of this do you agree with? So Glenn says very soon in the next one to three years. So according to this document, by the time this young man turns 30 years old, we will be well in to the end game as we see, and I think he meant to say everywhere. All right. So in the next one to three years, chickens can't lay eggs anymore. True or false? Will chickens not be able to lay eggs by the time you're 30 years old? I think that's false. I think the eggs might not, maybe will reduce in quality or in amount or in availability, but like chickens, just like people, want to continue their species. And whether or not they understand that their eggs are being taken or not, I think that I think that chickens will be laying eggs as long as there are chickens. There you go. Which came first? They, will they be up to two dollars a dozen down the street? No. All right. Let's they will be. They will be. The next three years. They will be well over ten dollars. <laughs> okay. According to Glenn, we see this now in South Asia that chickens in South Asia cannot lay eggs. Have you ever heard that? This is new information. I don't have I don't have the source, so I don't know. Yeah, you don't have the source. I don't so know. I have no clue. Can somebody with friends in South Asia call your friend and say, <laughs> you got are eggs. the chickens still laying eggs in South Asia? Okay. All right. Here is cattle. Cows cannot reproduce. All right, let's, let's break the sentence up. Will cows be unable to reproduce by the time you're 30? I don't know, but I don't have a reason to believe so. Uh, I, I think the only reason is if, like... Actually, I don't know. I, I can't I'm, say on that one. I, I'm, I'm pretty though. sure that cows will still be reproducing. I think and, so. And, and uh, well, vast majority of cattle are... are reaped by artificial insemination anyway. Well, unless like a meteor <laughs> destroys the planet completely, uh, there will be cows okay. reproducing. But reproducing isn't even the problem because cows will not even be able to grow because grass will not grow. Okay. In the next three years, do you believe that grass will no longer be growing on the planet? I think three years is a very short timeline, and I think, in my mind, and I've talked about this in the last video, I think, in my mind, it's a longer span of collapse. But I, th I think in three years, and I think if you want to say humans are gone in two or three years, I think that the grass will be... I think it depends on if you're in a wet place or a dry place. I mean... <laughs> If you're in a wet place, you're either going to be underwater or the grass will be very happy. And if you're in a dry place, there will be no grass, probably. But there's already no grass in, like, most of the desert. So, but, but the Amazon rainforest is going to have a shitload more grass than yeah, it in three years. I think, that, I think that grass will be happy with the demise of humanity. Uh, there you go. Grass will be happy with the demise of humanity. I think we might have the title of this video. Grass <laughs> will be happy. Not just grass. Grass and everything else. Except possibly cows. Cows already don't eat fucking grass. They eat corn. They eat GMO corn. That's what right. they eat. Right. So, will GMO corn be growing on the planet in the next three years? Um, I think so. Yeah. At I least the so. GMOs will be growing and not the corn. Okay. Uh, well, uh, anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm, okay, this is according to Glenn, no more beef, no more beef means the end. No more beef means the end. No. You don't, do, do you not equate the uh, end of beef with the end of uh, the planet? I, I think that humans are, you know, humans are the end of the planet and they <laughs> eat beef but I don't I think that just like I mean I think that it cow, some cows may live 
when especially more cows may live when we're done eating them. But I honestly I don't know about I don't know about that one. Cows either. are going now, whether you well, think all cows are going now? The the the, the vast majority of cows are. Well, it's not and something dogs. I spend. I don't think about cows. A cats little. will do all right. The, the cats will survive as humans. Uh, dogs are effed. I, I think I no more beef is a great beginning. I think it means the beginning. I mean, uh, yeah, I think I just don't like beef. And uh, no more beef is a, is a good start. It's a damn good start. Uh, and then once we get to no more long pork, uh, where you know what long pork is, right? No, I don't. You don't know what long pork is? No. <laughs> Do you know what soil and green is? Uh-uh. Oh, really? This young man, he does not know what long pork or soylent green is. It's humans. It's it's. Oh. It's what cannibals eat. Oh God. Well, that's why I don't know. I'm not a cannibal. You're not a, you're not a cannibal. I'm not interested. In Obviously, this young man has a lot to learn. If he doesn't know what long pork is, he probably will in the next three years. I haven't gone down the rabbit holes like no. you people. Now maybe long <laughs> pork yet. and soylent green are on the menu. Uh, when, when they run out of beef, uh, I'm holding it, it, your dog it, it, by his butt so he can stay. So he doesn't fall off. Holding your dog's. Butt. Okay, where are we? <laughs> okay, how about this sentence? Drought in our. I think he means the U.S. Drought in our Southwest. I'm assuming we're in Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, maybe some of Utah, Nevada, is already an existential threat. Yeah, people die from that, like in the desert and don't have... How many heat, people heat did you stroke? read that died in the Grand Canyon so far this summer? The article was, I read, that three people so far have died from... Well, they, they, they won't, won't give the reason. They won't give the reason why they died, but they, the article also says temperatures will reach over 120 during the day. And so it's like, oh, that's why they died, but they're... It's pointing to they they won't declare a cause of death and then because the other day I was trying to Google how many people have died from this heat because it was really hot in New York and if you think it's hot in New York, uh, holy shit! But it wouldn't they wouldn't tell me internet wouldn't tell me like this many people died this year from heat and it's like oh well I know some people have died from the heat so maybe I'm wrong on that if somebody has a better source but it seemed to me like it wasn't something that they were very interested in uh, in documenting and sharing. Not uh, well. I'm so, can someone tell us how many people have died in 2024 of the heat? All right. So it's already an existential threat yeah, in the U.S. Southwest. That's what I was. So saying. give it another two years. By the time you are 29, it meaning I guess the drought will get to where you will need an indoor arboretum slash farm that is air conditioned and solar powered with electric security fencing and a lot of defensive arms which I think he means guns by by that and maybe landmines. Do, do you think in the next two years that he's basically saying that farming I guess at the very least and the U.S. Southwest is going to have to be indoor farming in air-conditioned buildings. So this is specific to the Southwest. Well, I, that's what I'm a little bit unclear in by the comment. Because like, if because that's a very different comment if it's specific if it's talking about everywhere. But like in the Southwest, they already like growing sucks in the West. Like in the Southwest, I mean it's. I know because I, I was living at ten thousand feet at a, in a town in Colorado, and like that. Everything had to be grown indoors, for because it got too cold. Yeah, too cold. But, it, but it's also feet. too too dry, too cold, like too hot. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it's already not great. So yeah, it might be it might be fucked. But I also I'm a little. I'm and then all they're interested in growing is weed, anyways. And then you're like, but I'm starving. I don't need more weed. <laughs> well, anyways, I, I'm just <laughs> curious. What's going to be running all the air conditioners in these indoor vertical farms? Is indoor farming where the air conditioning and the water is going to be coming from. That's for the one percenters that have the money to do that. I mean, it's 
And then, and, uh, and if that comes down to that, I'm probably just gonna like go to sleep and. Well, you can grow bottom, lettuce. Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's good can. for billionaire salad bars. Yeah. 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 I, I, indoor farming is basically a salad bar for Bill Gates. I I do not see well, the arboretums like uh, it's hard to imagine an arboretum indoor. Yeah, uh, uh, acres and millions of acres of cornfields, yeah, like, wheat fields, where do you get rice the, paddies. Where do you get the materials in air to build conditioned that? buildings? Yeah, you, where would you even get your materials if the world's already in that stage? Like you would have had to have been stockpiling it. Look at that yeah. damn little tick on me. But I think we'll all be dead of Lyme's disease by then. Uh, I hope it's not Lyme's that kills us all. Okay. Uh, so you're not quite ready to buy that in the next two years? I don't buy indoor arboretums, even if we are completely fucked in two years. Uh, yeah. So indoor arboretums and uh, vertical farming are not going to save humanity. No, it might keep some people going for a little while. Yeah, as I say, the billionaires and eating their salad bars. Yeah. All right. Then, I don't know if this is a direct result of that, or just with more stuff, as riots ensue. So in the next one to three years, riots are going to ensue. Let's just stop right there. And There's rioting all over the world today. So you're okay with that one? Yeah. Do you think there's more riots this year than there were one to three years ago. I don't know. I probably not. I think 2016 was a lot of rioting. Yeah, it was a good riot. And then also there's a, lot, there's a but there's a lot of rioting about Israel and Gaza right now. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. I'm not a rioter. I I really and a lot of my liberal friends hate that. But I'm not a rioter. I'm a peaceful contributor to um, love. <laughs> well, you're not helping with the ensuing riots. I'm, not, right. I'm not contributing to any riot anytime right. soon. As riots ensue, again, guys, this is the next one to three years, we will be fighting for antibiotics. As rioting ensues, we will be fighting for antibiotics in the next one to three years. I'm not even going to try to go to a pharmacy or a medical office when global industrial civilization collapses. Uh, I'm going back to what my ancestors did and working with what I got until I'm dead. Yeah, I'm not sure how many antibiotics, but that that's implying that global industrial civilization is going to collapse in the next one to three years. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I, I don't see myself going and pounding on the door. But I, again, I don't, I don't have a family member. At, a child or uh, someone who would need that so I don't know I can't put myself in those shoes okay now I am not a hundred percent sure what this means but give us your gut reaction and as riots ensue we will be fighting against against a national open door prison policy I'm not sure what a national open door prison policy is. So I don't, I think it's talking about like letting all of those criminals go. Like prisons, you just come and go as you please if you're a prisoner or something. Yeah. Is it is it letting too many people out of prison? Or putting too many I, said, people I, I, in. I can't, yeah, I'm that, unclear. That one's, that one's unclear. Whether he, he's on the Trump side of the fence. I mean, nobody, we're letting too many people out of prison. If you're still working out of prison to keep people in prison while global global industrial civilization is collapsing, I think you're wasting your time. Uh, yeah. So I don't, but I don't necessarily think that means that all criminals are going to go out and try to like kill everybody or something. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue about that one. Well, uh, you know, as I say, I I love these Trump cards. They, they're railing, uh, anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to, we're not going to get off on a bottle. <laughs> we're not going to get off on a front, let's get back, okay, all right. It does seem like a conservative fear. All right, a small bite of food, a small bite of food that we will get to wash down with a cup of water, contaminated 
with microplastics and PFAS chemicals. I have my plastic water bottle too. And it, well, it's full of my well. I, I honestly don't know if my well water has. So, do you think, uh, I guess we'll be lucky to get a small bite of food that we will get to wash down with a cup of water contaminated with microplastics and PFA? Uh, it sounds like you kind of, uh, or I mean, most people, what are, you were talking about earlier, you would go for that one. There's no way around the contaminated food. I think many, if most of our food probably already is contaminated. I, I don't know if that, I, I can imagine we may have a lesser amount of it when, like, yeah, when human when humanity is phasing out, we'll have less. So if you're not comfortable eating vegetables and fresh food that you can grow, assuming you can grow it, then you won't be eating much. Um, but I also think they're even today, like, they, I was talking to a farmer and they were telling me, like, they can't, they're growing non-GMO food, but then the GMO food from their neighbors has gotten into yeah, their plot, yeah, and so now yeah. all their corn is already bonded with it, yeah, yeah. and so then all the corn is GMO'd, even if you want to try to, you know, so then, and then like, when they spray pesticides on these fields, even if you don't want those pesticides, your neighbor's there field, you is those pesticides are going I'm all in your corn as well, and so I, I'm not a farmer, I may, I may be off on that, but that was what I understood no, from no, the yeah. conversation, yeah, and yeah. so... So I, and that's, it's the same with the plastics and the pesticides. It's the poisonous human-made things that I really have a problem with. And I, I think that's correct. I think that, I think our waters, you know, water is the most valuable resource in the world. Like water is essential and people don't realize it who have water. But if you've ever been uh, like backpacking in the desert, I, I did a cool trip. I got the chance to do a cool trip in Utah. But we were like every little watering hole we found between each like 10 mile or 12 mile walk was really valuable. And then when I got home and it flowed from the tap, I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, you don't water. miss your water till the well runs. By. You don't miss it till you don't have it. And so I think water is something that will either be in overabundance or underabundance, depending and, on where you're at. What time of year? Yeah. Well, in the Finger Lakes of New York, we were talking about a, if you die of thirst in the Finger Lakes of New York, you really are fucked. When people, uh, the last thing that you will die of, it bugs in a dark farm, is thirst. Okay, he has three more. He'll be underwater here. Dead fish floating everywhere. I mean, de dead fish already for there. I mean, plastic is pretty much the... I mean, it goes back to plastic with that one, but I think the fish are already dying. I mean, the... Oh, I had two uh, during that heat strike in my pond, and you missed them. They didn't cook. Two of them, yeah. I had two of them belly up in the pond last week. Yeah, they're getting On um, those really, on those hottest, you know, the hottest days we've ever had. So you gotta stop eating fish and stop counting on fish. So, uh, yeah, I had dead fish floating right here at Bugs and Jar Farm, and that's everywhere. All right. Rabid animals. Do you think rabies is going to uh, increase over the next one to three years? Possibly. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any dog in that race. I mean, I, I, I think that it's an issue for some animals and always has been, but I don't know that. I don't know. And finally, well, that makes that does make me think of your bear story, where that bear got into your into the human food, and then that bear became angry because it was eating the human food. Well, he wasn't rabid; he was drunk as shit. Uh, but he was also maybe because you weren't the first person yeah, to attack. Yeah. But anyway, so anyway, at least, all right. And finally, fires consuming everything in one to three years. Fires consuming everything. Towns in the southwest. So you think we are? Uh, you, you think we are going to see more towns burning to the ground? I mean, wildfires. In the next one to three years. Wildfires have been an increasing problem, but, but the, and it all goes back to the problem of when wildfires were not, like when humanity didn't have such a strong footing all over the globe. Wildfires naturally happened, and they were good for the ecosystems, and, the, and they are. In many cases, wildfires can be a positive thing, but the way that we have influence the land and the Native Americans didn't do this where they totally cut down all the trees in a certain area to prevent those natural fires that were good for the area. Now they spread much more and I've had a forester explain this to me that that the, the way that we took care of the land 
when our ancestors were in charge is very different than the way that we take care of fire mitigation. So by mitigating in our human ways, we're actually encouraging these fires. And so I think that anywhere that is human created, like any towns that were designed to avoid fires are gonna have fires. I mean, that sounds crazy, but I think that humans just couldn't, we couldn't leave anything be, and now it's probably too late. <laughs> God, I sound like a damn doomer. You do sound like a doomer. But I think, I think, yeah, that wildfires has been I don't even want to call them wildfires. I think that's where I went off on that tangent. Is that they're not they're wildfires, but they're not really. They're very much human fires, even though they start naturally, quote unquote. Um, well, yeah, it's a big, it's a big where problem. You are like in the Amazon. The vast majority are started by humans. Sure. Voluntarily. Sure. I guess uh, I was living in Colorado. It was more of a subject that was monet that we talked about yeah. the scene because it's, it's a problem there and it i can't imagine like i i don't know you've seen you maybe have seen that documentary about the the paradise fire in california horrific i like that happened that was real that wasn't from a movie these people were trapped in their town that was How burning people died 88 i i don't know and, and it's a that's a horrible way to die um but it's a problem wildfires are scary and they can kill. And if you find it, you wake up and there's a fire not far from your house, you don't have any time. So, anyways, yeah, fires are a problem. Have been. I don't think that's anything new or interesting that that guy, person. I don't know if it's a guy. That person said, "Glenn." I don't think. That's, All right, Glenn, you got a mixed review on your predictions from the from the twenty seventh. I, I I could be wrong. Glenn, I, might, I, be, Glenn I, might be completely I, right. I don't know. We 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 will see. Uh, but one to three years is a stark turnaround. Like. Things are gonna start to have to happen fast, and they are. But I think that I think that's gonna. There's a lot of chance involved for that to happen. So obviously, the the main question people want to know is, um, when you were with us a month ago, you were making. Was it in the interview when you said you wanted to? You, you hope to meet a woman, make lots of food, art, and babies, plural. I think that's an ideal situation for any human, right? I mean, I'm not. I get if you're a doomer and you have the context and you want to like, like I think it's. I think it's. The, more, you got to have that as, as a, a growing up when you did. You were taught that that is what should happen in a life, and that that's. Uh, and, and I think. Are it's you sad. are you less likely to want to have lots of babies than you were one month ago? I didn't. I was kind of joking when I said lots of babies. Okay. I never ever. Are you lots less of likely to have one fucking baby uh, than you were a month ago? Let's start three babies. Are you less likely to have three babies than you were one month ago? Yeah. Okay. I think. Are you less likely to have two babies than you were one month ago? I don't know because I haven't met anybody yet, and. I'm not, I would have a really hard time, and I don't want to get political at all, I, at all, I would have a really hard time personally, mentally, physically, emotionally, if I knocked someone up and they had to abort the baby. I, I don't think I would support that choice. I mean, I would support whoever I was with, with whatever they wanted to do, but I, I would, it would be a really, really difficult and sad thing for and there's everyone a, involved. And there's a way to prevent that. I know it. It takes about 20 minutes. <laughs> I know it. But I okay, I'm going to make the statement right now. I will pay for this young man's vasectomy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. So he can't say that. He can't I, I will I'm not ready pay. to make that decision yet. Uh, okay, so it ain't what Okay, there you so you're I'm not, not, ready to make that you're decision. not quite a doomer yet. I'm not quite a full on doomer yet. I, can't, right. I can't make that So choice. you're getting offered a free vasectomy but I also, I also, you want one. I also don't like going to the doctor or going to the dentist or going to like I don't like getting so I, I don't think I would like it at all for many reasons but it's not it's just Wait, not a choice I'm ready to make right now I don't know uh, okay, I'm still yeah. I still I'm learning a lot my my, my past few months have been very very turbulent he's leaving the breeding option open so uh, anyway we'll we'll keep working <laughs> on it depends All on right. who I'm talking to or who I'm with so uh, 
do you have any last minute uh, closing? Just that I think that, and this goes back to my spiritual points that I've made maybe in the last video, maybe earlier, but that I, humans are fucked, but that like life and, and I, and organisms will be here and if not here somewhere um, and I think that I am I am all life and you are all life we are this and this is it and that's kind of my philosophy is live in the present be happy I, I am the Walt Whitman quote uh, if you're looking for me after I'm gone look at the grass under your bootstraps the well, grass isn't gonna be growing anymore. well and there's no more leather boots. Look for me in, through your microscope when there I'm a piece of bacteria. There but like, li I am life. And when the you grass stops life, growing and the, the weather stops. There will be something <laughs> living. There will be something living that will turn into something else. I, what did I tell my friend the other day? We were talking about life being just a fractal, right? Like if you're a fractal and I'm a fractal and you die, it's just a ripple of a fractal. And it spreads out more and more and it absorbs into other things. You know, energy is never destroyed. It's always transferred. So I think that that is kind of where I'm coming from is that you can, you can destroy humans. Humans are destroying themselves. Humans are parasitic to this global life. If you think of the globe as one being, we are the disease on our being. And it's... It's crazy to say that because I, I love a lot of people. I, in fact, I very much am very grateful to be a human right now. It's a little, I wouldn't want to be anything else right now, but I think, yeah, we're running out of time as humans, but that life is forever. I don't agree with that. All right. You heard it for the second time from this young man, so uh, we will see if you get 3,412 hits after that comment. Well, thanks for having me on Humpty Dumpty Tribes. So we'll try to <laughs> bring the bring Grant on about uh, once a month as he progresses. And you're gonna uh, have to start paying me. And, and it's when uh, we all get to celebrate when he takes me up on the on the vasectomy offer. <laughs> That'll be a true victory. If you're still kicking and I'm like 50, yeah, I might. No, no, wait, okay, I need to put an answer about it. I'm going to have three kids first, no, no, you, and then no. I'm going to come when I'm big ready. No, it's, the, it's called the Golden <laughs> Snip Award, which I, the Voluntary Human Extinction you Movement, told which I'm a car. told the, me about your Golden Snip. Golden Snip, a, the Golden Snip is you get sterilized before your first child. Okay. So the, vasect the free vasectomy offer goes out the fucking window uh, as, as soon as you make the biggest mistake you will ever make in your life. So uh, okay. once you've made that brutal, just existentially depressing mistake in your life, there, there, you can't undo it. You, you, you have exercised your God complex and you've lost your free vasectomy. Okay. So it has to be a golden snip. The silver snip doesn't count. Noted. Yeah, silver snip is you have one kid, and then uh, I think the silver snip. No, golden snip is snip before the first child. All right, we shall see. All right, guys, I have uh, got to go play vacation rental host, and have to go hide some mouse traps in the kitchen frying pan. You don't need to tell what you found in the frying pan when you got here this morning. Oh Lord. <laughs> wouldn't play well with Sancho you're going to have to wake up alright and it's your dinner time little dog it's dinner time I got to go home he's got to get back to his comfortable apartment with no wifi no wifi <laughs> no couch bye guys <laughs>